This is a new technique available from an orthopedic company, Arthrex, that allows us to gain access to the back of the heel to remove a retrocalcaneal exostosis, which is nothing more than a large bump growing on the back of the heel. We can also remove some of the intratendinous Achilles calcifications at the same time. And if the patient has what's known as a Haglund's deformity, which is a large bump occurring on top of the heel bone, we can also gain access to it and remove that as well. So what we're basically doing is removing the large portion of the back of the person's heel through four tiny incisions to reduce their pain. This is very common. Patients will present with pain to the back of their heel where they think it's Achilles tendonitis, but it's actually on the bone where the Achilles inserts into the heel. Achilles tendonitis, on the other hand, would occur more proximal or above the heel bone in the central portion of the Achilles, which we refer to as the watershed area, because that portion of the Achilles tends to become painful during tendonitis as it has a reduced blood supply. So this, on the other hand, is a procedure to remove the bony prominence, not to really do anything to an inflamed Achilles in the mid-substance of the Achilles. So what you can see we're doing here is we're separating the Achilles tendon from the calcifications that are on the back of the heel. We're using intraoperative fluoroscopy, which is x-ray, to allow us to see this bump so we know exactly where we're working. The analogy would be something like doing arthroscopic surgery in the knee or ankle or even laparoscopic surgery in the abdomen. So you can see here, that's that large bump that we're removing with this burr. And this is a burr that is a high torque burr in a low speed, so it's not actually destroying tissue. And you can see we remove the back portion of the heel bone. We're using some pituitary rongeurs or even a hemostat to go in there and dissect out any of the large prominence that we've removed. These prominences, which are within the Achilles tendon or pushing on it, are what's causing the pain. And here you can see before and after once we have removed it. The next step is to reattach the small portion of the Achilles tendon that was removed during this process. And that's done through the insertion of anchors on the back of the patient's heel. So you can see we're now prepping to insert these anchors. So there'll be two inferior anchors, and then there's going to be two superior ones. The superior ones are going to have actually knotless suture tacks, which are going to allow us to pull the Achilles tendon back against the heel, as well as have two fiber tapes to then insert into the anchors that go into the inferior portion of the heel. So what we're inserting here are the knotless suture tacks, or what are also known as knotless fiber tacks. Suture tacks are somewhat different. So the next step in this procedure is to allow us to expose these different sutures and fiber wires or fiber tapes that are on the back of the heel. So these are on the superior portion of the heel and we're bringing them through the skin so that we have them in separate planes because we want these to be extra tendinous as they pull the tendon back to the heel bone. So the two superior and central fiber tapes are similar to the speed bridge that we use to reattach the Achilles tendon when doing an open procedure. So next we're pulling through our knotless fiber tacks, which are going to re approximate the Achilles tendon to the back of the heel, as well as provide what we refer to as a rip stop to prevent these other superior fiber tapes from pulling distally or inferiorly or through the Achilles tendon. So right now I'm reaching from lateral to medial to grab these knotless fiber tacks that were inserted. I'm pulling one to the lateral side, so it's inserted medially and it's getting pulled laterally. Now we're going to pull one from the lateral side, go over it and pull it out of our medial incision. After that's done, we're going to take our lasso that has a mark on it. We're pulling it down through the hole of our fiber tack. We're grabbing the fiber tack on the end using our lasso to then pull that knotless fiber tack through. 
It's going to go down through that loop that was inserted into the calcaneus, and there it's being set. So now we have a knotless fiber tack that's pulling one portion of the Achilles against the heel bone. Now we're going to do that same exact process from the lateral side. We're using that lasso to grab our knotless fiber tack. It's pulling that fiber wire through, pulling it on the outside of the Achilles tendon, but yet on the inside of the skin. So it's between the skin and the Achilles tendon. I'm tensioning those. It's setting our loop that's within the cancellous bone of the calcaneus. And that is also a rip stop to prevent those superior fiber tapes that you can see that are still on the outside portion of the skin from pulling inferior. Now that we have those nice and snug, the next step is to grab those fiber tapes. I pulled our lateral ones lateral, and now I'm pulling the medial ones. And these are on the exterior portion of the Achilles, but internal to the skin. I'm testing to make sure that we have a nice substance of these fiber tapes in the Achilles tendon. And now the next step is you're going to pull one of them directly inferior, and then one of them obliquely. So here I have my medial one that's attached to that loop, that's that knotless fiber tack that's deep within the uh, calcaneus. I'm pulling one portion of that fiber tape obliquely lateral and then one portion inferior. And those are going to get inserted with our anchor into the inferior portion of the heel bone. Now I'm doing the same thing here from the lateral side of that knotless fiber tack, grabbing the medial fiber tape. It doesn't matter which one you grab as long as you have one arm going obliquely medial and one going inferior. And this is the same concept if you've ever done a speed bridge that's an open procedure. And so you can see we're crossing over the Achilles tendon and then we're going to insert those into the inferior portion of the Achilles tendon with our swivel lock which is that inferior that distal portion of our anchor as well as a tenodesis screw so that tenodesis screw gets pushed into the calcaneus with those fiber tape placed through the swivel lock and that swivel lock acts as a backup as well as that tenodesis screw and we're just tensioning these as tight as we can to resistance not making them too tight so that it gives us an unnecessary tension when it pulls out so there you have it. We reattach that small amount of the Achilles tendon that was slightly disrupted during our process of removing that posterior prominence or Haglund's deformity. And then we used four small incisions to close this up. And there you can see this postoperatively, four tiny incisions. This is so much less pain than the open procedure. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below.